So thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure to welcome you to Northern Kentucky History Hour. I'm your host for tonight, Mary Jane Calderon, joining you from my office at Beringer Crawford Museum. Also joining me by the power of Zoom is my co-host for the evening, Heather Cook, and our presenter, Brewster Rhodes. So thank you both for joining me. Northern Kentucky History Hour is a project of Beringer Crawford Museum, Northern Kentucky's History Museum, that would not be possible without support. Thank you to all of our sponsors, including the City of Covington, Kenton County Fiscal Court, ArtsWave, Kentucky Arts Council, Northern Kentucky Sports Hall of Fame, the Carol Ann and Ralphie Hale Jr. Foundation, and our members. If you're not yet a member of the museum, please consider joining for access to discounts and exclusive programming. Learn more and join at bcmuseum.org. We would love to hear from our viewers tonight. So if you have a question or comment to share, please type it in the chat or in the Q&A feature, and we'll be sure to get to those at the end of the presentation. Let's go ahead and meet tonight's presenter. Brewster Rhodes is a longtime resident of Cincinnati, Ohio, and has been an environmental advocate campaign manager and nonprofit executive for over 50 years. A graduate of Williams College, Brewster was a VISTA volunteer in Western Massachusetts, an association director in Washington, DC, an environmental organizer in Cincinnati, and the Southwest Ohio Regional Director for Ohio, for Ohio Governors, Dick Celeste and Ted Strickland. He managed over 150 issue and candidate campaigns in Southwest Ohio. Brewster served as the executive director of Green Umbrella, the Sustainability Alliance for Greater Cincinnati, before his retirement in 2015. Brewster is currently the chair of the board of the Ohio River Way Incorporated, a nonprofit working to promote outdoor recreation opportunities on and along the Ohio River from Portsmouth, Ohio to Louisville, Kentucky. He also serves on the board's Adventure Crew, the Mill Creek Alliance, the Ohio Environmental Council Action Fund, and Innovation Ohio. An avid kayaker and cyclist, he is the founder and chair of the Ohio River Paddle Fest, now the largest paddling event in the US, as well as the Great Ohio River Swim. So thank you so much, Brewster, for joining us. Before we get started, there is a quiz question tonight. The first respondent to enter a correct answer in the chat on Zoom or Facebook Live wins a Northern Kentucky History Hour prize, and most importantly, bragging rights. Tonight's question is, how many weeks from May 1st this year to today has the Ohio been deemed unsafe for swimming in Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky, according to the water quality sampling conducted weekly by Orsanco, which is the Ohio River Sanitation Commission? So go ahead and get those answers in, in the chat and the first correct answer will win a prize. So now Brewster, if you're ready, you can go ahead and we can get started. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, I am going to share my screen and jump into this presentation, hopefully, um, that I have prepared for tonight. So it's a pleasure being here. I really appreciate you guys inviting me, Mary Jane. And um, to those of you listening, um, look forward to having a, di a lively dialogue with you about something I'm passionate about, the Ohio River. I'm basically a river rat. Um, I spend lots of time on the Ohio, and uh, we'll talk about that uh, as we go. So um, this is a presentation again about the Ohio River Way and our, our, our tag basically is uh, promoting <clears throat> recreation and connecting communities and celebrating the Ohio River Way of Life, uh, which I, I love that concept. Um, and there we go. Okay, so we're going to be talking about the river, but the river is, you know, a huge watershed. Um, all these tributaries flowing into the Ohio, it's giant. So you can see here uh, how many states uh, how many uh, sections of, of small sections of states and big sections uh, all do flow into the Ohio, which of course is a tributary of the Mississippi. Um, how come this isn't moving properly? Okay, so basic facts about the Ohio. So, you know, you all know it's 981 miles. It's the third largest river in America by volume that is discharge. Um, it is 40% bigger than the Mississippi River when they merge. Think about that. The Mississippi is a tributary of the Ohio. It should have been called the Ohio all the way down to the Gulf. Of course, as I mentioned, we drain parts that are all of 14 states and drinking water for 5 million people. The watershed has 30 million people in it. We have 160 species of fish and we do have class five whitewater, believe it or not, on the Ohio, which is at the falls of the Ohio in Louisville. 
and essentially the Ohio uh, from Pittsburgh to where it begins to uh, the Mississippi River is a series of lakes, slow, slow moving lakes. We have about 20 of them. Some are as short as 10 miles. And these are of course defined by the dams and others are as long as 120 miles. Uh, and this is the stretch of the river that the Ohio Riverway is working in from Portsmouth to West Point, which is downstream from Louisville. It's a stretch of about 275 miles of the Ohio um, and it includes obviously Metro Louisville, Metro Cincy, but uh, all these other towns along the Ohio, uh, most of which were founded between eight, 1788 and 1815. These were early towns as, as uh, European expansion essentially from the East Coast kept going further and further west. Um, so about the Ohio River Way, uh, it mentions 275 miles. We have 27 counties between those that are in, that are contiguous to the Ohio, that are in Ohio, Indiana, and of course, all along Kentucky. Uh, three states, three million people, as we mentioned, these are the major cities along the way. Um, and of course, Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky here. So this, I love this picture because it so defines, uh, I mean, the river defines our region. Uh, it's the most you know, important natural asset that we have. It's the source of our drinking water. It's the postcard that visitors send home when they visit our communities, Northern Kentucky and Cincinnati side. Um, the bridges, it's, it's full of history, uh, full of culture. Um, it's just, I, I just love it. And over time, uh, we've turned our backs on it. And now increasingly uh, folks, developers, um, uh, the public at large are, are turning towards the river, recognizing what an asset it is for community and economic development. So I'm going to say a, a crazy river rat. Uh, I live part time on this houseboat, which is right across from um, uh, essentially from Fort Thomas and, and, and um, uh, Dayton, Kentucky, uh, at the Ohio River Launch Club. And sometimes it gets cold, as you can see in the bottom right, and it just freezes over, uh, not all, necessarily across the river. I haven't seen that ever happen. It did in, in, in uh, 1977 or 78, of, of course, people could walk across it. Uh, but this is the marina, the Ohio River Launch Club that I'm docked at. And this boat was actually built in 1955. It's a double-decker steel Kelly made in Louisville. Uh, no engines, but it's just like a floating log cabin, and I love it. So it was mentioned that I started and still chair paddle fest. It's become the largest paddling event in the country. These are pictures from this past year. Uh, we've done tw had 22 years in a row, and 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 of course our great Ohio River swim. So these are pictures from the swim this year. Uh, turned out to be a, a marvelous day. 240 some people swam across the river uh, from <clears throat> Serpentine Wall to Newport and Levy on the back. And both of these events are sponsored by and benefit a nonprofit that I'm on the board of called Adventure Crew, uh, which works in 27 inner city high schools, both in all of since uh, all the Cincinnati public high schools and then Covington, Newport, Bellevue, Ludlow, uh, Bromley and Dayton. I think I got them all. Um, and so we have paid faculty advisors in each school and each month the kids in each club get to go on a full day outing to swim or paddle or fish or hike or uh, uh, camp. <clears throat> um, or, or kayak. And um, it's a great way for young people who might not otherwise ever get to connect with the natural world to do so on a regular basis, not just one time a year, but uh, month in and month out. And it gives uh, young people a chance to move up in their uh, career development. And so we help young people get full-time jobs in the summer and get into college programs in outdoor recreation and natural resources management, et cetera. It's a great organization, check it out. So the, as I mentioned, the river is really a series of, uh, of slow moving lakes with these 20 dams. And this is this is the dam at uh, McAlpin down in Louisville. Um, as you can see, the difference is 30 some feet when they lower the, uh, the dam. Uh, this was obviously uh, uh, kayakers going through it. So next year, we're going to set a record in Louisville for the largest number of canoes and kayaks ever locking through. I think we had 480 this year, but I think we can get up to 1,200 if we really push it next year. It's a lot of fun. And the river rages. I mean, it floods. This is uh, this picture in the bottom right, of course, with the old stadium is from um, 1997 when the river went to 64 feet. And I would kayak through the garage. Uh, underneath the parking levels there. And it was like white water underneath the, uh, the, the old stadium. It was great fun. And Willie Cunningham kept asking me to give uh, the WLW daily reports. I want a full report, Rhodes. So that was a lot of fun. And um, so, uh, of course, we are a major corridor for uh, transport, uh, for commerce. And 
each of these barges, there are generally 15 toes in a barge, I mean, barges in a tow. And you think about the environmental benefits of this, it's huge because uh, this barge, generally there are 15 tow, uh, barges in a tow, uh, is the equivalent of 216 rail cars uh, or 1,050 trucks, which if you put them um, uh, in a row on a highway would be almost 20 miles of trucks moving what uh, uh, the average um, tow can, can move. So think about that. We're keeping every time you see a barge out in the river, it's taking 1,050 trucks, 20 miles worth of bumper to bumper truck traffic on 75 or 71. It's amazingly efficient. Now, of course, we're not the first people to be, um, you know, interacting with the Ohio uh, native peoples <clears throat> been here for millennium and left some evidence of their presence in this region. Uh, of course, you have the Serpentine, Serpent Mound in Peebles, you have uh, further up, further north, the Hopewell, um, uh, uh, um, uh, fortifications and, and you know, land masses they, they built. Um, and then, you know, you, you think about what happened. This is, of course, on the mural uh, there in Covington um, with Buffalo, of course, roamed this area well, you know, before European settlers came out here from the East Coast. And that's the Licking River coming into the Ohio. And this was a Buffalo Trace, a Buffalo Crossing. So generally in the summer, you could walk right across, they could walk right across the river because it was low, there weren't any dams. And this basically became 75, Interstate 75. Um, and by 1806, there were no Buffalo left in Ohio. And it took until 1820 for the last Buffalo to be killed in Kentucky. Um, so it's just amazing. There were thousands and thousands, I don't know, hundreds of thousands in both states, and they were wiped out uh, for obviously for food and for shelter. Um, so, you know, there's been a lot of history in this corridor here. Um, uh, to the left, you can see uh, Mount Adams had no trees on it. And it eventually, of course, became a vineyard. Uh, but this is probably 1850. And on the right, you see a flatboat coming down the Ohio. And that's how most uh, early settlers, European settlers, came in this region, uh, starting in any, anywhere from 18, 1790, uh, of course, up to 1820 and 30, when we started having um, uh, <clears throat> paddle wheel boats uh, and steamboats that were the main mode of transportation. This is the flood wall in Portsmouth. Um, and speaking of Portsmouth, uh, I had, my family goes way back eight generations. My great, 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 great grandfather came down on a flatboat in 1805 from ports from uh, Pittsburgh. He grew up, he, he was uh, in Philadelphia, moved out to Pittsburgh when he was 69 years old. Jump on a flatboat, uh, his, one of his daughters, he had 10 kids um, and her husband had moved to Portsmouth. They built a log cabin at the confluence of the Scioto and the Portsmouth. Um, and he moved in with them because of family and health. And in 1806, it burned down and they spent time, a lot of time working to build this house, which is now the oldest house in Southern Ohio. It's um, built, it's called the 1810 house because it was built in 1810. And of course, there are probably 10,000 people who also have the same gentleman as their great, 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 great grandfather. But it's always nice to go back there. They treat me like royalty. Um, but Sundays from two to four, you too can visit, but because the Historical Society keeps it open, uh, this great little house. So then you start thinking about other aspects of history in the High River Valley, and obviously the Underground Railroad uh, with Ohio and the Kentucky border there, because Ohio was the, uh, the crossing over to, um, uh, <clears throat> to a freer uh, life. Um, but you can see all those crossings that are from uh, Kentucky right over into Ohio. And we, of course, have incredible network of underground railroad uh, sites, uh, the Rankin House being one of the most famous in Ripley. Um, so there's incredible rich history. If you wanna understand the underground railroad, you need to come to the Ohio River Way to do so, regardless of where you are in the United States. You gotta to come to this part of America to understand that. And of course we have tons of natural wildlife, You know, whether, whether it's the birds or the fish, that's a, a needle nose gar uh, I saw next to my houseboat recently. And then looking up one day and I saw this deer, this eight point buck, maybe even 10, swimming across the river, uh, going to the Ohio side, jumped out and just went cruising through the soccer field <coughs> right there by Schmidt Field. Um, and of course, we have tons of fish. I, I mentioned 160 species. Well, I'll tell you, the largest catfishing tournament in the United States is in uh, Rising Sun, Indiana. On the right-hand side, you can see it from this past year. They have 200 entries. It's just amazing. But on the upper left is Manchester. They just had their first catfish tournament. They had 62 entries. Um, so the river is rich 
with uh, fish and, and wildlife overall. And obviously people have been cycling along the shores for years. Um, uh, upper right, you can see um, uh, Lawrenceburg has a River City um, bike share program. Lauren, they share it with Aurora and there's a, five, a beautiful off-road five mile bike trail, trail connecting those two cities. And ultimately they'll connect to Rising Sun and further down to Vivi and to Madison. So eventually there will be a, an off-road bike trail along that entire stretch of Indiana along the river. The woman on the left, She's from New Zealand. I met her in Vivi this past spring, and she flew to Los to New York. I mean, sorry, flew to uh, San Francisco, got a bike, uh, and she spent six weeks crossing the United States on her way to MIT, where she was going to enroll in a PhD program in physics. And she had been on the road for six weeks. We bump into her on the shores of the Ohio in Vivi, Indiana, for heaven's sakes. Um, so anyway, there's a, a growing amount of bike trail development, and we're deeply engaged with that effort. And there's, of course, uh, power boating and kayaking, as I mentioned, but in the bottom right here, on, on the right-hand side is Manchester Island uh, off of Manchester, the Ohio. Um, and on any given Saturday, there might be 100 boats rafted off, just having a grand time. And here's the Whitewater, Class 5 Whitewater, just downstream from the, dock, from the uh, 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 McAlpin Lock in Louisville. And uh, so it's a mecca for whitewater paddlers. Unbelievable. And of course, you have small boats, big boats. I love this picture. This was in, um, in Hick off of Hickensport, uh, Ohio. And then we have boats that aren't going anywhere. This boat was, is called the USS Sechem, Sachem, and it was built in 1902. It served as Thomas Edison's floating lab. It was a ferry in New York. It was put in the service of World War II. Um, Madonna actually filmed um, What's the name of the uh, Papa Don't Preach? <laughs> that video, if you check that video, you will see this uh, boat, believe it or not. Who would think? So it's scuttled uh, in Boone County across the river from Lawrenceburg up a creek. Um, and it's fascinating to go and check it out. But there's amazing historic towns from Portsmouth, Mansburg, Maysville, Ripley, uh, going on down New Richmond uh, to Northern Kentucky, of course, and Cincinnati, Dearborn County, Rising Sun, et cetera. And Madison, just gorgeous, Hanover, and all the way down to West Point, uh, Kentucky, which is about 30 miles downstream from Louisville. These are the towns that are part of the Ohio River Way. And here's another picture of Maysville. What a gorgeous historic town that is right on the Ohio there. Of course, uh, Augusta, you know, where the Clooney's live and where George uh, was born and raised. Uh, just a fascinating, beautiful, uh, historic old town uh, with... Uh, the Beehive Tavern uh, found in, or started in, in 1792, I think it is. And here's, of course, New Richmond. What a gorgeous town that is. Uh, Madison, Indiana, where we'll have our summit. Mention that later. And, of course, Louisville. And each of these communities have, uh, uh, you know, annual festivals up the wazoo. We all know the ones we have uh, at, at the, uh, in Newport, uh, right on the riverfront, Cincinnati, Riverbend, Upper Right, uh, the, the uh, Louisville um, <coughs> Riverfront Park. On uh, the bottom left is Madison, uh, but annual events, like any given weekend, uh, there are zillions of things going on. Richmond has the uh, cardboard boat regatta at their annual river fest. But then there's also the sort of what I call the Ohio River way of life. It's slower pace. It's people just enjoying the view, young, old, multi-generational appreciation for the river. People just checking out on a Saturday morning or uh, uh, the new Richmond riverfront, bring the family down, have a picnic, catch some fish. Take a break from your bride, from your bike ride in, uh, in uh, overlooking the river in the Louisville, uh, New Albany area. And uh, this is behind St. Rose's Church um, on Eastern, uh, on yeah, Riverside Drive now. Uh, but of course, checking out the boats here. And uh, if you can see to the right of that boat, that is um, the, the, the Bellevue Bar in Dayton, uh, Dayton Beach. So Imagine this, in, at the turn of the century, 1900, this was the largest sandy water, sandy uh, river beach in America, inland river water, uh, inland river beach in America. It was full, it was, it, there'd be hundreds and hundreds, if not a thousand people uh, sunning themselves, uh, taking little canoe rides. There were a uh, hundred cabanas to change in. There was a, a dog track in, uh, in Bellevue and Dayton at the time. And that's because the river was so much lower. You could walk across this river at this spot over to St. Rose's Church uh, at the turn of the century before the, the bigger dams were put up. 
And of course, some people just, this is Manchester, a guy who owns a, uh, he's a city council member and he, and he owns a, a marina there. And this is how he gets around. In fact, he's coming to our summit by air, just cruising down the river. And of course, I think the Ohio is really about, it's all for lovers, what the hell. Um, so how did we actually get started? Well, um, for years, uh, a gentleman with River City Paddle Sports, Dave Wicks, would always come to our paddle fest. And at the end of the uh, end of the Ohio River Paddle Fest, uh, we, down, we were down at the uh, Gilday Riverfront Park. He would uh, get, you know, come up to the festival, grab a beer or two, jump back in his kayak and say goodbye. I said, where are you going? He said, I'm paddling home, back down to Louisville. And sure enough, he would do that for year after year. So he said, hey, Rhodes, let's get some people together and we'll do a similar paddle. We'll go right on through the night. So we, would, we decided, okay, fine. We'll have five of us from Adventure Crew, five from River City, River City Paddle Sports, and we'll paddle straight on through to Louisville, 133 miles. We did it in 30, 30 some hours. Um, and we left at eight. We got there at five the next day, the next afternoon. We were pretty exhausted, but we, and we only stopped to take a leak. And what a trip. So the deal is at two in the morning when there's no ambient, ambient lights, it looks like, you know, Native Americans just were traveling down the river when uh, there was no settlements from us. And um, <clears throat> like Lewis and Clark had the same experience. And you start thinking, wouldn't it be cool if we could take our love for the river and figure out how to get other people to join in our effort to improve, increase appreciation for it, use it for economic and community development, uh, get more people to connect to the river for recreation and public health, and especially mental health. There's nothing more beneficial to one's mental health than paddling on a beautiful river uh, in just going past small towns, et cetera. So I love this shot with the, <clears throat> Uh, with the rainbow there, of course, but eventually uh, we said, listen, we ought to get together a little steering committee and see what we can do about getting these communities to collaborate with each other, to get other people who care about this stuff and all work together. So sure enough, in 2020, in the next year, we uh, formed a little steering committee, as I mentioned, and we applied to the National Park Service and said, yo, we got a great idea here. Can you give us some technical assistance that is staff, not money, to help us develop a program, an organization that will take advantage of, uh, of all these assets that we have and start getting people to collaborate uh, to market this region as a great destination for adventure and ecotourism and for community and economic development. And sure enough, with their help, we developed our uh, little uh, uh, you know, vision and mission here, which is, you, know, you can read it here, but to make, a, to make the High River an accessible and welcoming recreation corridor with vibrant towns connected by land and water trails. And our mission is to facilitate world-class on and off-water outdoor adventure opportunities from Portsmouth to West Point through partnerships to promote healthy recreation, education, tourism, stewardship, and economic development for Ohio River communities. We need to make that shorter, I know, but regardless, uh, that's what we're doing. So of course, the first thing to do is develop a website, which we did. We developed a digital guide with the help, actually the leadership of OKI. They developed a digital guide to the Ohio that shows where all the marinas and fuel docks and boat ramps are campgrounds, et cetera, uh, point, historical points of interest, um, which allows you know folks to plan multi-day trips. It even has what we call the AIS system built in, so you can see updated every 15 seconds in real time where the barges are, what direction they're going in, the name of the barge, and what their speed is. So it's a great safety benefit, but it's huge. And then we have a, a page for each of the communities and a calendar of special events. We have over 150 annual festivals and celebrations that are held th throughout the course of the spring, summer, and fall in our communities. Information, safety information of various sorts, all kinds of stuff that's in there. Plus we got, plus you can buy these little kind of things for your dog. Uh, that's cool. We have information in real time when it, whenever it's updated once a week on the water quality conditions that Orsanko uh, puts out every week. And this is our sort of a graphic image of our digital guide. And then we did a webinar. So for every month, for a year and a half, we did a webinar on different topic. We might have 100 people, 200 people even joining in just to build the network of engagement around the general concept of getting people to collaborate around the Ohio. We partnered with the Lewis and Clark uh, National Historical Histor Historic Trail. Um, the trail in the past, up until 2019, started in St. Louis and went out to the West Coast tracing their steps. But in 2019, they said, hey, they got themselves to St. Louis by going down the Ohio from Pittsburgh. So let's also capture uh, their points of interest and the, the kind of engagements they had. So we are the official local partner with the Lewis Trail. And in partnership with the National Park Service and talking to our communities, we asked, okay, what do you need most from us? And they said, hey, can you help us assess 
our um, amenities that we have and what we could do to make ourselves more attractive for uh, visitors and for our own residents to engage in re outdoor recreation um, and improve the quality of life uh, and increase the number of people who visit us. So we put together with the National Park Service a program called Rivertown Reviews, where we would basically provide fresh eyes on their communities. So these communities applied. We did 13 or 14 communities over a period of two years. Um, and we would A, do an analysis of their um, digital presence, like what could you learn by spending half an hour online about that community, what you could do, where you could stay, where you could eat. Uh, so in other words, how good were they at sharing what they had to offer? And we did a whole critique where you might have 30 people each spending a half hour filling out a, a questionnaire and providing, we provided that feedback to them. Then we would do an uh, extensive uh, on-site set of tours for a day or two. They show us around, we'd analyze the, the, uh, ups, the strengths and weaknesses of their boat docks and of their uh, uh, bike trails and other kinds of amenities. And then we did a community engagement session, which a lot of, a lot of which had to be online uh, give, given COVID, but it, it ended up with a 40 or 50 page report that was written by the National Park Service that came back to that community with recommendations on low line fruit that were easy things they could do to make themselves more uh, attractive and engaging for their own residents and, and uh, visitors alike when it comes to outdoor recreation, et cetera. And this was an example, a screenshot of one of our sessions. Um, I think this was with Madison, Indiana. And then um, we developed a, a master um, a report on all those Rivertown reviews that the National Park Service issued. Uh, and then they developed a toolkit that's now being used all over the country to train their staff in every community about how to engage folks to analyze uh, and review for communities, especially small ones, what their strengths and weaknesses are. And here's an example of how that benefited communities. This was the old, this is the old uh, uh, logo for Portsmouth and Scioto County Visitors Bureau. Okay, it's kind of corporate, it's not particularly engaging. But after we tore apart their social media presence, because you can't, you could not find out what was cool and hip and fun to do in their town that had to do with outdoor recreation. And they have so many amazing assets, just amazing, that we recommended they um, change their course, change, change their approach, and they did. And they ended up hiring because the prior person was retiring. They hired not a tourism professional. They hired a guy who spent eight years working for the National Park Service to be their tourism director for Scioto County in Portsmouth. And Nate's been doing a fantastic job. And the first thing he did was change the logo. And this is the logo he developed for Scioto County in Portsmouth. You get a feel now for what you could do and what your experiences you could have with this image alone. It just tells you right off the bat, hey, come on out here because we are into outdoor recreation. We also work with these communities to help them install, identify the need, raise money and install kayak access ramps or informational kiosks like the one on the left. And we're working hard now to try to standardize those up and down the river so there's a constant brand. We did a, a summit for all the mayors and elected officials, city council, judge executives, county commissioners, township trustees. We had 67 elected officials on the call hosted by the mayor of Louisville and the mayor of Cincinnati, FTAP. And it was the first time they had ever been on the same, it was a Zoom call, but the first every time they the first time they ever met to talk about what they have in common. And then we held our uh, first in-person summit in, in Lawrenceburg. Uh, last year, and we had 150 people, uh, great representation and turnout, elected officials like the woman on the bottom right is just an amazing dynamo, um, and workshops, et cetera, that brought people together. We asked people, what what do you see as the value for the Ohio River Way? What, can, what do you think we're doing that's helpful to you? And A, busted myths about the Ohio being dirty and dangerous, because that's one of the first things people say, well, who gives a damn about the Ohio? It's dirty and dangerous. Well, the truth is, it's far less dirty and far less dangerous than most people think. And we're here to help people um, understand what the truth is about the river. Create a sense of place and marketing it as a destination. Uh, helping communities develop new recreational amenities and connect them to grant opportunities and drive economic development by promoting you know, adventure and ecotourism. Uh, providing a cohesive message about the river's benefits and uniting communities to advocate for investment in ecological restoration, bike trails, recreational amenities, and historic preservation, and then provide training and technical assistance. That's what they see as the value of what we're doing because we're actually doing all that. And this came you know, from the feedback from the summit. And one of the things we've been doing that really helps to step, keep us in touch with our communities along the way um, is an annual 10 day paddle from Portsmouth to Louisville. So we have two 30 foot Voyager canoes that the French trappers used to use. These are not the actual ones or the ones you saw in the earlier picture, 
And for, we start in Portsmouth and, and go 25 to 30 some miles every day, meet with the local elected officials, camp out, have dinner at a wonderful spot and uh, we pay our own way and 20 different people at any given time. And it is a gas and we get incredible press at every one of those places. And, and here's some of the pictures from our past trips. And last year, we developed signs that we in turn distributed at 18 different press that is ribbon cutting events. And you may recognize the mayor of, of uh, Covington, the mayor of Newport, the mayor of Bellevue, um, uh, park director for Covington. Um, and, 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 uh, and, and, and there you can see Dennis in the, in the blue in the back, you know, he's now the governor's um, uh, director of um, the office of, I don't know, he's basically, he's the guy who gives out all the money in Ohio. And um, Dennis Keene used to be a state rep, of course, in Northern Kentucky. And um, he was there. And we had the woman in the red. Uh, she's the head of Ohio Department of uh, um, Natural Resources. So she was at our press conference in uh, Cincinnati, and she paddled down and across the river. And the, uh, I think the mayor of Covington uh, um, stamped her passport, and she was able to get out and join this press event. And so the idea that you have the top uh, ODNR person from Ohio join with the top political leadership in Northern Kentucky to, to officially uh, launch the Ohio Riverway with this new brand was, was really powerful. And these, so we had a sign at all 60 boat ramps customized to the name of the community, the mile marker, uh, just to start branding the Ohio River. And then we decided to set up uh, committees and, uh, uh, you know, that to work on different aspects. And those committees meet on a monthly basis. Uh, and they'll all meet face to face at our summit coming up next week. Uh, but you can see these are the different kinds of things that these committees do uh, tourism and river cleanups and working to you know, preserve land and, and maintain it. Um, uh, more identify land that is available and try to acquire it, developing these theme tours. Uh, working on developing hike and bike trails and promoting the history of the community of the region. And this is an example of what Orsanko does with their annual river sweeps. We're working hard to increase the, the number uh, of those river cleanups up and down the river, have a little competition between communities. Uh, this is a, a workshop we did last week uh, or two weeks ago <clears throat> uh, for marinas in greater Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky to help them identify ways that they can become clean marinas, a special certification program so that they're being environmentally responsible and not contributing to contamination and pollution in the river. Our trail team has been working on hike and bike trails. Um, and the first thing is map what's there now and, and what could be further developed. So that's very exciting. Uh, we then, our marketing team and tourism team created the first annual Ohio Riverway Guide. Uh, which started out to be 16 pages, half ads, half uh, content. And because so many ads were sold, it went up to 52 pages because every community wanted to have an ad promoting their community uh, in the Ohio Riverway Guide. Um, and it's in everybody's interest to have this distributed. And we have more copies. If you'd like, let me know. Uh, but we, you know, it's just, it was an outstanding way to uh, provide a, a booklet about what's going on with the Ohio River, what you, you know, events, safety, uh, ways you can engage with it and use it. And here's another example of collective action. Okay, I told you about May uh, Maysville, Kentucky. Well, a friend of ours who lives in Cincinnati, who is the executive director of the uh, Outdoor Writers Association of America that we're members of, um, uh, was able to get onto the uh, selection panel for USA Today's they do all these like, you know, voting things, right? For best this, best that. Well, he got him, he, he was able to get himself on the five person committee that picked the top 20 best candidates for best small town in the Midwest and best small town in the South, right? So once he got on the committee, he said, okay, I got two nominations, Madison, I mean, uh, VV, Indiana for Midwest and Maysville, Kentucky for the South. Ohio was the borderline. Um, and with help, I mean, we helped those incredible folks in both VV and Maysville get zillions of people to vote online to be the best small town in the Midwest and the best small town in the South. Well, they both won. So the best small town in the USA Today Reader's Choice for 2023, both towns were on the Ohio River Way, VV, Indiana and Maysville, Kentucky. And that gave them gold for marketing themselves nationwide. Um, and some of the challenges, the river was named this year as the second most endangered river in America, not the second dirtiest river in America, but the most endangered. And that's in part because of microplastics, of, uh, of sewage uh, overflows that come into the Ohio, 
of development of agricultural runoff, uh, algal bloom issues. By, and that was the term uh, announced by American Rivers, the national advocacy organization. So it was a shot in the arm. It really gave a lot of people a reason to get involved in helping to uh, push legislation in Washington to finally give us the resources we need. Ohio River Basin gets zero earmarked federal dollars for restoration initiatives compared to the Great Lakes at 368 million this calendar year, this, this fiscal year, Chesapeake Bay, the Everglades, et cetera. They all get line items in the federal budget uh, to deal with uh, the runoff issues and, and other threats uh, to water quality. We don't get anything. So now we're working with the uh, uh, Ohio River Congressional Caucus um, uh, and Congressman McGarvey from Louisville is the Democratic chair and Congressman Johnson from Southern Ohio is a Republican chair. There are 60 members of Congress that are members now because we push them all to be members of the Ohio River Congressional Caucus. So we're working with them to ultimately get in the federal budget in the in next year or the year after uh, money to implement a uh, restoration initiative. Our next and current goal is getting the National Park Service with whom we have this very close partnership. In fact, they're paying now for two full-time staff. They are, they, their staff are now full-time on our payroll. They're paying them actually, but on our staff uh, to get an at, to get the fe uh, federal government, the National Park Service to designate our stretch of the Ohio River as a national water trail, uh, which is huge. There are only 35 in the country. We'd be the largest one, uh, the most industrial river to be named a national water trail, um, but it is a huge national distinction that will be great for marketing for every community because they will be able to use the National Park Service logo in all of their marketing, proud to be on the national, the Ohio Riverway National Water Trail, so designated by the National Park Service, and that's big. And this article was in the front page of Sunday's Louisville Courier Journal all about our effort to get that designation. It also, the same article by the same guy ran uh, Sunday as well in the Cincinnati Enquirer. Um, I was gonna play a little video, but I can't do it. So we have a summit coming up uh, on the 25th and 26th of, Mad of, uh, of October in Madison, beautiful historic Madison, Indiana. Um, and we'd love to have you come. We already have uh, 130 people registered from 106 different uh, communities nonprofit organizations, tourism bureaus, conservancy districts, um, and state and federal agencies. So we have the keynote speaker being the deputy director of the National Park Service coming out from Washington and his counterpart in uh, the West Coast coming out. So um, we have great panels and workshops and a lot and promises to be a lot of fun. So what have we learned? Communities are hungry to connect and collaborate. Uh, most don't realize or many how attractive their recreational, historical, and cultural assets are to potential visitors and future residents, frankly. And there's a lot of interest in creating a sense of place in branding the Ohio River Way as a destination for adventure and ecotourism and historical tourism, for that matter, as well in the Midwest. And uh, the river is increasingly be seen, being seen by elected officials as a priority focus for their collaborative action. And uh, hey, take it from me, cheerleading and networking pays off. It gets people to share be their best ideas, to sense, create a sense of, of working collectively to make things happen uh, and to have clout and, and impact. And ultimately, this is really an organizing project, uh, building the outdoor recreation economy. Uh, so many of these communities have been nailed by the, by the flight of capital. Um, and so build on the assets you have, especially our smaller communities. And uh, it's, it's we're really working to revitalize those challenge communities and, and promote that tourism and investment. And then also, this is really important, I think, growing the constituency for stewardship and environmental restoration. It's one thing to be talking to people about all the facts and figures about how screwed up uh, the environment is. It's another thing to get people to interact with the river and its tributaries through canoeing and kayaking, through power boating, through swimming, through fishing, through actually connecting to this great resource. And then it, in other words, it's hard to advocate for something you don't know. And part of our job is to connect people in ways that they say, I know this river, I know the tributaries, I know the watershed, I care about it. Uh, I wanna see it improved. And I am motivated to talk to legislators, uh, to get people, to oppress people on what needs to be done to make, to improve the situation. So this is my wife and this is one of our trips up and down a river. We spent four days uh, this past summer just cruising around, put the boats on the roof, put the kayak, put the uh, bikes on the back, you know, go to Airbnbs, 
very affordable in the small towns and explore. Uh, look at the historical and cultural assets these communities have in addition to the recreational benefits. So, and we're in the process now, uh, as I was mentioning to Mary Jane before we started, of developing, and we really appreciate Berenger Crawford's engagement through Sean Mendel's leadership, creating um, a series of different kinds of theme trails. So one of them is the Museum Trail, the Ohio Riverway Museum Trail. So imagine there are 102, I think, museums that are history, culture, and art museums. The Taft Museum is now a new member of us, for example, um, in addition to Berenger Crawford, uh, but where people can explore the museum trail from uh, south of Louisville up to Portsmouth and beyond. Um, you know, take you know, check out all the incredible museums along the way. Same thing with Native American History and Culture. The Archaeological Research Institute in um, Lawrenceburg is spearheading the effort to identify uh, ways that people can learn about and experience the history and culture of Native Americans in this community. Uh, we're also looking at a wine brewery and distillery trail. Duh, it's not a beeline. We need a better name for it, but. There are incredible uh, places where you can, you know, wineries, breweries, and distilleries. The oldest winery, commercial winery in America is in VB, Indiana. Why the Swiss? It's called, it's in Switzerland County. So the Swiss came there in the 1890s and started immediately growing wine and you know, growing grapes and making wine. <clears throat> and uh, uh, Jefferson would send out to them uh, uh, to get, have people have them ship somehow. Somebody's going to carry it back to wine, to uh, to Philadelphia actually. Uh, wine from Beebe, the first commercial winery in America. Who would think? So anyway, and now there are distilleries up and down the river. So the river is an, such an incredible asset for all of us to better understand, better appreciate, market. This is a picture from Eden Park, looking out over, uh, you know, Dayton and Bellevue and. The development is a little dated because the development's much more aggressive uh, since this picture was taken. But this is this is a, our river. It's an amazing asset for all of us, and we're grateful that you all took the time to spend with uh, with me and think about what we have and figure out how to take advantage of it. So, with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Mary Jane. Thank you so much, Brewster. Um, you were such an advocate for the Ohio River. It was. I'm, I'm, a, hot, I'm a hot dog. What the hell? I just, you know, life is too short not to make a difference, right? Yes. Um, and your pictures were gorgeous. I loved all the pictures that I got to see. Um, but I think we have a little bit of a video that you, we were going to maybe try to share. Sure. You, you guys can that? figure it out. So I need to unshare my screen, right? Yeah. Yes. And then okay. Heather, I think Heather's got it. She can pull it up on her screen. You want to give a little bit about where yeah, you saw yeah. This is just to follow up on our effort to get the federal government, the National Park Service, to designate the Ohio as a national water trail. And this uh, story ran last night, actually, uh, in, in Portsmouth and in, in the Portsmouth, Ironton, uh, Charleston and Huntington media market. Uh, but it's great. Go ahead. Cities like Portsmouth, Ohio are part of the Ohio River Way, a nonprofit organization that's now seeking a federal designation that would make Ohio River cities more marketable. News Channel 3's Joseph Payton is on scene in Portsmouth with more about what this could mean for cities along the river. Well, this is a designation that would not only have an impact right here in Portsmouth, but also on all of the Ohio River communities from here to Louisville. The Ohio River Way is preparing to apply to get this stretch of the Ohio River on the National Water Trail System, a designation that would have to come from the National Park Service. It's signaling to the rest of the country and anyone else that's interested in, in uh, river recreation that we have this great resource here that they can come visit and enjoy. Being added to the National Water Trail System is something that folks like Jody Coons hope could possibly improve the perception of the river especially after hearing some apprehension from locals when organizing riverbank cleanup events and canoeing trips. They have a fear of actually getting out on the river. Um, when I encouraged people to get on canoes, they, they were pretty scared of the idea, afraid of the water. Both Coons and Mayor Sean Dunn are happy that Ohio River Way is submitting this application and they hope the National Park Service will consider it. I feel like we're right beside the river and we need to utilize that to our advantage. We can add more funding for activities along the river, hosting uh, specific events, uh, developing new traditions involving the river. It just would be a great step forward for our city. Now the mayor tells me that Ohio River Way may not hear the results of that application and whether or not it has been approved until the end of 2024. Here in Portsmouth, Joseph Payton, WSAZ News Channel 3.
So Ohio River Way first launched back in 2019 and has since then added more than 100 communities along the river to its mission of promoting recreation. And the mayor tells us they have really helped the city find new ways to promote itself while utilizing the Ohio River. Whether you're trimming trees. Well, thanks for sharing that. You know, if that does a much better job than I could possibly do in sharing what we're oh, all about. So thank you. Okay, Thank why you, don't Heather, we... for making that happen. Good job, Heather. So um, let's go over the quiz question. We did have a winner. Um, I would believe it was, her name was Tina on Zoom. So the question again was, where's the question? Uh, Heather, do you have a question? I can't seem to find it. Um, it is, how many weeks from May 1st this year to today yeah. Has the Ohio been deemed unsafe for swimming in Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky, according to the water quality sampling conducted by Orsenko, the Ohio River Sanitation Commission? And the correct answer was one, one week. So congratulations to uh, Tina for getting that correct. And thank you for giving us um, your address. We'll be sure to be sending out your prize soon. Well, way to go, Tina. Do you actually look at the weekly reports that are online from Orsanko? Because that's just really good that you nailed that. Wow, I'm so impressed. I will say she guessed four and then we worked our way down to one. I kept telling her, you're so close. You're so close. <laughs> well, the, 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 you know, basically, as I mentioned, Orsanko, which is the Ohio River Sanitation Commission, weekly does water quality testing at five different locations from Portsmouth down to Louisville. <clears throat> Uh, and post that, uh, and you can get that email every Friday. And it identifies what the river level is, the current, the volume of the river, cubic feet per second. Um, and then also, most importantly, the E, -like, the e. coli count, which is the, the key factor. Of course, you don't want to be swimming when, it's, when you got a lot of E. coli in the river. And you know what I'm talking about. Um, so the E. coli count uh, is recorded in, every, in that weekly report. And so I went through the, the reports and and the reason, and that was one week, the week, the last week in July, and the river popped up from pool stage, which is 26 to 27 feet of level of elevation, uh, to 44 feet. So it jumped 17 feet in uh, in height because of massive storms that occurred that week. But then the following week, it dropped back down to pool stage again. So almost all summer, it was the best boating summer and swimming summer in years because there's been a lack of rain. Well, so Tina says she has friends that have a houseboat and they're on the river a lot. That's how well, she... she knows. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So um, if anyone has any questions or comments, please leave them in the chat. As of right now, I'm not seeing any. Heather, have you gotten any? I haven't seen any. Oh, come on, guys. You got to ask some questions. <laughs> Is there anybody who I'd, I'd be interested in letting know, like if you if you are a regular boater, put your name in there. Let us know how you how do you use the river? Uh, do you do you like go on? Do you boat like Mary Jane from time to time? Do you kayak? <laughs> uh, do you like to ride a bike along the shoreline? Um, you know, let us know how you engage with the river. That'd be interesting to me. Yeah, I, I've been lucky that I've had friends that have friends that have boats, and I've been invited. So that's the best. They have friends <laughs> who have a boat, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but I love being on the river, on the water. It's just something about being out on the water. It's just. Yeah, it's it's great. Absolutely. Um, are there any things that you like to share what your favorite things are to do along the Ohio River Way? Well, I just uh, I just love if, uh, like, uh, <clears throat> the, the best way for me to chill out is to spend a couple hours paddling. And, and I live in the east in Mount Washington section of Cincinnati, and I'm just a mile up from the river close to the marina that I they, uh, where my houseboat is. And so I will often uh, just jump in the river, uh, actually pre-position my bike at uh, 10 miles downstream, get in my kayak, paddle downstream, ride my bike back to my truck, and then go back and get my kayak. So I don't need my wife to meet me or do any kind of shuttle. I can just do whatever I want to. And I get both cycling in and paddling in. And I get to uh, explore you know, the, the west side of Cincinnati along the short, long river road and through downtown and out um, Riverside Drive, and it's a beautiful uh, mental health break for me. Wow. I love that you said it for mental health, because I do. I believe that is something really of benefit your mental health by just being out on the water. 
Well, there is something about water, no question about it. Mm -hmm. Well, we do have one question now from our assistant director, Sean Mandel. So Sean wants to know, do you know how many paddle wheelers are in operation? Good question. Uh, Marietta has the annual Stern Wheeler Festival every year. And Marietta is probably the, is the most historic um, town because it was one of the first founded given the, uh, the way that, that, that uh, settlers moved down the Ohio. Um, and they, they will get like 20 to 25 Stern Wheelers but they come in from all over. They'll come in from the Mississippi. They come in from um, uh, uh, all kinds of places. So I don't know how many, I mean, there are, um, well, I, I don't know the answer, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Um, we do have another question from Cindy. It says, how are you reaching college students and do you need volunteers? Well, we, we're always looking for skilled people regardless of their age but I think especially college students, um, Heather, uh, to, uh, to, to roll their sleeves up. And, and we, can, we can give young people in school um, uh, the opportunity to make connections, uh, to engage in, in, in projects where they actually meet people and do concrete stuff, whether it's you know, working to develop a, a, a page on our website that is all about the brewery, winery, and distillery trail that we're developing, or working with Sean on the museum trail, uh, or helping out at the summit at, a, at an event like the summit we have, helping to organize our annual ten-day paddle. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of things that, that young people can do, and about reaching students. Um, that 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 is a challenge. I mean, we've we've been able, like, we had a one a, a graduate student spend ten days on the river with us from the University of Louisville this past summer, and she had a great time. She's an environmental science major, so there was a natural rationale there. Um, but we we do have uh, we work, we've been working with DAP at UC, uh, and to some extent with NKU, engaging students to be helpful with us. I'd love to have more engagement with college students, so please let me know what connections you might have, but we are, I think we can provide authentic, useful experiences that will help build resume content and, uh, and create opportunities for people to get jobs when they graduate, because it's all about relationships and networking. And that's what we're all about. I want to see some people leave some comments, um, like you said, about how they they experience, you know, river life or how they've enjoyed the Ohio River, you know if they're kayaking, if they're bicycling. Heather, I'm interested to know if you, if you've ever done any of those things, what you've done along the Ohio River. Um, I drive over it to get to work. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Okay, well, I hope that tonight's presentation has maybe made you want to maybe try to experience some other things. And this is actually somebody, Saint Cindy asked, what happened to tall stacks? I was gonna ask, is that gonna come back well, it got to the point where it's so expensive of uh, given insurance and the cost of basically buying out the boats so they could afford to come up here. Um, uh, it, 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 because you basically have to guarantee a certain minimum revenue stream for each of those boats. Um, uh, but again, the insurance was ridiculous. And the guy who ran those those uh, tall stacks, Rick Ryway, is on our board. And um, so he's the first to tell you how difficult and challenging it is in this day and age to pull that kind of complicated event off. What you need is serious sponsorships. I mean, because that, that, that's probably a four to five million dollar project to do that for a week. Uh, and, that, and, and that's just what you need to, to upfront, upfront the cost. Because, I mean, they do sell tickets, et cetera, but it's very expensive to do that. Now, there is an effort to have in Cincinnati at least a celebration using the river to celebrate the Ohio state of Ohio's 250th anniversary, which is in 2026. So there's some groundwork being laid to make that happen. And that may involve uh, a sort of tall stack like series of activities and events. Okay, yeah, because I remember going on field trips to tall stacks and that was that was a was a fun event. Definitely was no question about it. Okay, does anyone else have any questions or comments that you'd like to leave in the chat? Heather, do you have any questions or comments for Brewster? Oh. If you don't, no problem. So um, I'll give you guys my personal email, which is simple to remember, brew, which is what I'm gonna have right now, uh, Ohio, B-R-E-W, Ohio spelled out at Gmail, brew Ohio at gmail.com. So don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, love to engage with anybody on the call. 
And uh, I just really appreciate, um, you know, Mary Jane, what, what you are, are doing, give us the opportunity to get the word out. Uh, we'll use this tape, uh, the recording here to further reach out to other people. So we'll hopefully get more people to be watching this too. That'd be great. Uh, we really just appreciate Barringer Crawford's engagement, particularly through the work that Sean is doing with us. So thank you so much. Yes, well, thank you so much. Sean also has commented, thank you so much for your time. This has been a wonderful presentation. And I did put your email in the chat. So if anybody oh, yeah. needs help uh, seeing it, there it is, brewohio at gmail.com. So That's thank you so much, Brewster. I guess we're going to go ahead and wrap up, Heather. So we've got some promotions because we've got some wonderful things going on here at the museum. So right now, let's, we've got the Diana Taylor Art Show that is currently on display in our education center and that features artwork by local high school students. The paintings are gonna be on display through November 5th and there's prizes to be awarded to winning students and pictured here are our uh, first through third place winners. So congratulations to, it was a Notre Dame Academy student, Dixie Heights and Covington Catholic. So be sure to check those out. Also, Halloween is just around the corner. So we've got Halloween Hoopla returning to Nature Play, our play area outside um, of the museum on Friday, October 27th from four to five. We're gonna have creepy crawly craft stations set up where children can learn about the creatures that live in the museum's backyard. You can meet a mad scientist doing some spooky experiments. Costumes are encouraged, but not required. And this is all free while supplies last. Uh, in case of inclement weather, we will move inside the museum. You can contact Kim at education at bcmuseum.org with any uh, questions. We've also got Holly Jolly Days quickly approaching. So save the date for our holiday toy trains, a window through time exhibit featuring vintage feather trees, antique German Christmas ornaments, beautiful 19th century furniture, antique toys, and more. Our winter wonderland light up displays will also be a nature play. All that is going to start on November 11th, so more information coming soon. Also on November 11th is Behringer's Bazaar Holiday Market. So crafters will be selling one-of-a-kind gifts for the holiday season. If you are interested in participating and having a table, please contact Maureen Tierney at mtierney, M-T-I-E-R-N-E-Y, at bcmuseum.org. Lastly, there will not be a Northern Kentucky History Hour on October 31st in celebration of Halloween, but we will be back on Tuesday, November 14th, and that is going to be with children's book illustrator Christina Wald. Um, so look for more, stay tuned for more information about that. For more Northern Kentucky history throughout the week, check out our Facebook page and our YouTube channel where you can find the latest curators chat, which actually Brewster has done a curators chat with us, so it's on there, so you should check that out. Um, along with all of our past Northern Kentucky History Hour presentations. So please like and subscribe. That's all that we have time for this evening. Thank you again to all of the sponsors and supporters of BCM. Until next time, take care, everyone, and good night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much.